those who don't know me, my name is Chris. I am in R2 in the Interventional Radiology Program. Uh, I'm going to be presenting to you today on my project entitled The Quantitative Assessment of the Effect of Intra-Arterial Nitroglycerin on Hepatocellular Carcinoma Perfusion Using 2D Perfusion Angiography. I have no disclosures. So just a little bit of background. Um, most of you are probably aware that nitroglycerin is largely used um, in the cardiac theater um, because of its vasodilatory effects. However, um, there have been a couple of groups who have recently shown that nitroglycerin actually may have a multifaceted oncologic effect. Uh, in mouse models of melanoma, uh, a group was able to demonstrate that there was a preferential increase in tumor perfusion relative to normal background tissue. Uh, furthermore, um, in an RCT in Japan, patients with non-small cell lung cancer who were given a nitroglycerin patch uh, had a lower circulating level of VEGF as well as hypoxia-induced factor 1 at follow-up. There was also a significant increase in the time to progression in the patients treated with nitroglycerin patches. Furthermore, uh, the same group who demonstrated that there was an increase in tumor perfusion with nitroglycerin also demonstrated that there was a greater deposition of macromolecular chemotherapy agents in these same mouse models. One of the mechanisms that has been proposed for this effect is that uh, the enzyme responsible for the conversion of nitroglycerin to its active form nitric oxide, which then causes smooth muscle relaxation, is actually overexpressed in the hypoxic environment of tumors. Now the imaging methodology we employed for our study is called quantitative digital subtraction angiography. So just a little bit of background, um, I'm sure everyone knows this, but perfusion imaging is basically a time result repetitive measure of tissue enhancement after one injects a contrast agent. Furthermore, what 2D perfusion angiography is able to do, or a QDSA, is able to generate a time intensity curve for a specified region of interest after contrast injection. And this is done traditionally using uh, digital subtraction angiography, like one might see in the intervention radiology suite. Uh, traditionally, uh, most perfusion imaging is done using CT or MR, with the disadvantage of that being that those are static imaging. QDSA can actually be performed in real-time situations. So our hypothesis is that uh, there is going to be an increase in perfusion to hepatocellular carcinoma lesions after the intra-arterial administration of nitroglycerin. And our secondary goal was to kind of assess the utility of 2D perfusion angiography. So basically, this was a retrospective study. We looked at 2D perfusion angiograms attained during MAA planning um, from September 2019 to February 2020. Basically, all these lesions were live at 5, and there was readily identifiable tumor and background normal hepatic parenchyma. We did not include patients who already had previously treated lesions, uh, and we also did not include motion integrated studies. Basically, the way we calculated this is, I'll show you on the next slide, but uh, we demonstrated that you can actually create a ratio using the area under the curve of the time intensity curves before and after intraarterial nitroglycerin administration. And basically what we did was we compared the ratios of pre-nitroglycerin and post-nitroglycerin before and after nitroglycerin using a two-tailed unpaired t-test. And our results basically demonstrated, um, you know, we were able to get 12 patients with 12 good arteriograms. Um, our results demonstrated um, that there is a significant increase in the HEC to background liver ratio after the administration of intraarterial nitroglycerin, uh, with the pre nitroglycerin ratio being 2.18 and the post nitroglycerin ratio being 3.14. So, this is basically what the data looks like. As you can see here, I hope you can see my mouse. This basically is a tumor in segments 2 slash 3 of the left hepatic lobe. This right here is the tumor. This is normal hepatic parenchyma. 
So these are our ROIs that we generated um, for the time point. So this is a pre nitroglycerin uh, like time point. This is a post nitroglycerin time point. This is normal hepatic parenchyma. This, you can't really see it, but it's the same area as normal hepatic parenchyma. This is tumor, this is tumor. And this is kind of our the heat map legend. And you can kind of already tell from this that, you know, at these time points, there is a greater density of contrast here, as you can tell by the increased color on the heat map. And so this is over here, this is what the data ends up looking like. I know this is kind of hard to see, but the top curve, is post nitroglycerin administration for the tumor ROI. This is the pre tumor, the pre nitroglycerin tumor ROI. Down here, these are your normal tissue. So the pink is the pre, oh, sorry, the pink is the post normal hepatic parenchyma ROI, and the pink is the post nitroglycerin hepatic parenchyma ROI. And so you can already tell from here that if you were just kind of to eyeball the area under curve ratios, if you compared the pink area on the curve to the white area on the curve, there's already an increase. So these are our results. Uh, this is kind of like a breakdown of the patients. Um, 11 out of 12 were male. Uh, the majority of them had cirrhosis with the etiology behind their chronic liver disease being hepatitis C, average male score was 9.6. And this is kind of a breakdown of the arteriograms and the locations of the tumors. The majority of tumors were in the right hepatic lobe. Um, the mean nitroglycerin dose was 279 micrograms. And then you can kind of see here that these are the ratio of the area under the curve for pre and post. And in the vast majority of them, except for two, there was an increase in the ratio after nitroglycerin administration. And this is kind of a graph showing um, the pre and post ratios. You can tell here that this is the pre at 2.8, the area in the curve being 2.8, and post the average area in the curve being 3.14, and our p-value was less than 0 0.05. So uh, summarily, uh, there was a significant increase in the perfusion to ATC after the administration of intraarterial nitroglycerin. Uh, basically, this has kind of broad ranging therapeutic implications. Uh, basically, whenever we're kind of coming out with a dose for in the vascular treatment, such as radial embolization, um, you use the ratio of the tumor to normal volume to kind of estimate the embolic uptake. Uh, however, this often ends up actually being a qualitative measure as you can't really quantitatively measure this. And furthermore, it's a static image because these are actually generated normally from uh, MRs or CTs, and it's kind of difficult to really kind of estimate, like, after you inject the particles, what is the perfusion breakdown going to be? And the more accurate your dosimetry is, um, the more dose that's going to be delivered, and you also um, may be able to actually augment the amount of dose that you deliver if you administer natural glycerin. So um, the benefit of using natural glycerin may be twofold you might be able to have a more accurate dose and you also may be able to increase your dose delivery. And you know theoretically down the line, this may lead to a survival benefit. And kind of you know the physics behind this um, is basically there's Poussard's law, which states that the flow through a tubular structure is proportional to resistance. And I don't know if you can see my mouse, but if you look at the flow rate, it is inversely proportional to resistance. And if you kind of break that down, you can kind of see that flow rate is directly proportional to the radius. So if there is a two fold increase in the radius, you're going to increase your flow rate by 16 times. So, you know, you can kind of imagine that using nitroglycerin to dilate your arteries, you're actually going to preferentially increase the flow by a mag order of magnitude to tumor rather than normal tissue. And, you know, this may have therapeutic implications down the line. Uh, there are some limitations with this technique. Um, the biggest one being patient motion artifact. Um, patients have to stay still for the duration of the contrast injection. And, you know, sometimes patients aren't able to do that. And then there were two patients who did not actually increase their ratio after nitroglycerin administration, and they were already on nitrates. And, 
they may actually have already had maximally dilated vasculature. The other limitation is that this is inherently a two-dimensional perfusion technology. Tumors are 3D. Um, and so you may be slightly overestimating or underestimating the change in perfusion to them. And the other limitation to this is that you cannot actually measure absolute perfusion values. You have to normalize this data. Uh, future directions um, include, you know, enrolling a large number of patients and then hopefully coming up with some way to randomize natural administration without there being a harmful um, impact on such a study. And then the other kind of direction we want to move in is assessing tumor permeability using lipidol because nitroglycerin, as I said before, has actually been demonstrated to increase the permeability of tumors. So one way to assess that is using lipidol during radial embolization and seeing how much of that is left at follow-up. And then of course you can always measure tumor size of follow-up to determine that there is a survival benefit. These are my references. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone and uh, hopefully the department will find some way so that you can email me if there are any questions you think of. Thank you.